Hi everybody, I want to take a little time today to go over a topic that seems to be confusing my students and I figured it might be confusing you guys a little bit too, so uh, why not? My class today has been going over the difference between the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean. Not only the differences between the two, because the differences between the two are obvious to see when you look at it, but the main question is when would you use one over the other? Arithmetic is a noun. This is being used as an adjective, so it's actually pronounced er, it, met, ik, with the emphasis on met just like this is geometric with the emphasis on net. The arithmetic mean is what's commonly called an average, although they're both averages, commonly called the average. It's the one that most people think of when you talk about mean or you talk about average. It's when you add up all of the numbers and divide by two. So if I had four numbers, let's say 75, 82, 93, and 86. And if I wanted to find the arithmetic mean of these, I would add them up. 75 plus 82 plus 93 plus 86. And then I would divide by the number that there are, in this case, four of them. 75 plus 82 plus 93 plus 86. Remember my motto, don't be a hero, use a calculator. They add up to 336. 336 divided by 4 is 84. So it's really easy to figure out, and it's the one you guys are used to. Geometric mean is also an average, even if that's not the one we think of when we talk about mean. Geometric mean is when n when numbers are changing but not necessarily at a linear rate. When if arithmetic mean is used more in linear collections of data, geometric mean would be used in exponential collections of data. So, just a, a quick example, if I wanted to find the geometric mean of two numbers, let's say 75 and 82. Well, the way I find that is I multiply the two numbers and then I square root them. 75 times 82. Again, don't be a hero, use a calculator. 75 times 82, 6,150. The geometric mean is the square root of that. I got 78.42-ish. If you have more numbers, then you take a higher root. So if I have 75, 82, and 93, because I now have three numbers, I'm going to take a cube root. 75 times 82 times 93, 571,950. Take the cube root of that, and I got 83.01-ish. If I want to do the fourth, all four numbers, 75, 82, 93, and 86 is in the fourth root. So 75 times 82 times 93 times 86. And then I want to find the fourth root, 83.74. Notice that the geometric mean 
of all four is less than the arithmetic mean of all four. As, as a general rule, that's going to be true. You should expect the geometric mean to be less than the arithmetic mean. Now you guys are saying to me, Mr. Pledger, why would I want to do all this work? Well, for, for this case, you generally wouldn't. So when would you do it? Well, I kind of said a little bit ago, arithmetic mean is used for linear type data. Meaning you add to get to the next one. Add to get to the next one. Geometric mean is generally used on exponential type data. Where you multiply to get to the next one. So if you would approximate the data with a linear function, you would use this. If you would approximate it with an exponential function, then you would do this. An example, just to show the difference between the two, maybe a little clearer. Let's say I'm taking measurements. So 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 4 o'clock. And I'll do that for each one. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 4 o'clock. So linear type data. Things that accumulate. Stuff that accumulates. Let's say we're building, we're making boxes. And at 12 o'clock, we have no boxes made. So our number of boxes would be zero. And at 1 o'clock, we check, and they've made 30 boxes. At 2 o'clock, we check, and they've made 60 boxes. Now, at 3 o'clock, we're on our break. We forgot to take it when we came back. But at 4 o'clock, when we checked it, there are 120 boxes. But, Mr. Pledger, I see the pattern. Well, you see the pattern because I made it easy. There are two ways to do this. If you see the pattern, which is that we add 30 from one to the next, then you might figure out that the next missing one is going to be 90, which will get us to our 120 at the end. It's easy to see because the pattern is simple. But if we didn't, but if we didn't start from zero or we didn't pick a nice number, then you could still find the missing one with the average, or the, the arithmetic mean. If I take my 60 and I add 120 and then divide by 2 because there are two of them, 60 plus 120 is 180. Divide by 2 and that's the 90 that we got right here. Now for this, we're not making boxes anymore. Let's talk about, let's say, bacteria. Now at 12 o'clock, we have one of a particular bacterium. We check it at 1 o'clock, and there are two. We check it at 2 o'clock, and there are four. Again, we skipped it at 3 o'clock because that's our break time. We forgot to take it when we came back. And then at 4 o'clock when we came in, there are 16 of them. So we need that missing piece. Now you might be saying, Mr. Pledger, I see the pattern. Good. Hold on to that thought. So let's try the arithmetic mean first. It worked over here. 
let's see what we get over here. So 4 and 16 divided by 2. 4 and 16 is 20 divided by 2. That's 10. Is 10 what we expect to get there? Mm -hmm. Depends on the way you saw the pattern now. Try it with the geometric mean. The geometric mean in this case, we have 4 and 16, and we want to square root the 2. 4 times 16 is 64. Square root that, and we've got 8. 8 is the number that goes here, because if you saw the pattern, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. These are both averages. They're both called averages. But there's a difference in when you use it. If stuff accumulates and it has a slope of some sort, then you can use the arithmetic mean to figure out what's in between. This number might change a little bit and you could find an approximate mean. So this was like 27, 32, and this had gone up by 60 some. We would have got somewhere around 90 and that would have probably been about right. Um, that's where regression comes in and that's another video. Here, we multiply to get to the next one, so we need to use a multiplicative average, in this case the geometric mean. I hope that cleared that up. Um, if you like this video, subscribe, like the video, I'll try to make more. I'll try to go into more concrete uses of the geometric mean in another video. Have a nice day.